Okay, question number 13 from ray optics. Not the regular one like the image object, but something different. Sunlight of intensity 1.3 kilowatt per meter square is incident normally on a thin convex lens of focal length 20 centimeter. Ignoring the energy loss of light due to lens, that means absorption, and assume that the lens aperture is much smaller than its focal length, the average intensity of light in kilowatt per meter square at a distance 22 centimeter from the lens on the other side. So the idea is something like this, 22 centimeter. Here is the lens. The lens has a focal length 20 centimeter. And let's draw the line there. It's something like this. This can be taken as the principal axis. And it says, say, the focal length is 20 centimeter. We need to find the average intensity at a distance 22 centimeter. Let me draw the figure here. If we just see what sort of ray is going to pass through this, the idea is something like this here and here. And after that, 20 centimeter, let's say somewhere there. So there the light would be passing. And here the light would be passing. So these are the extreme rays that you could consider here. All right, so this is the situation. And that focal length, this is 20 centimeter, and this has to be two centimeter, because it's been said you need to calculate the average intensity at a distance 22 centimeter. And here, yes, the light enters, and the intensity given let me call it as I naught, where later on I'll be putting the value I naught as 1.3 kilowatt per meter square. Now, let's see. To calculate this particular radius, that's not a problem. Let me call this as small r and this the aperture as capital R. So that's not a problem. You can use the similar triangle that r by 2 equals to r by 20. So straightforward. R would be equals to capital R by 10. In other words, the aperture area, if you see, the radius changes or the radius varies by 10 times, so the area would also be changing by 100 times. The idea is quite simple. Okay, now let's try to calculate the intensity, what it comes from here. The idea is, see, how much would be the power that would be entering here? that power would be I naught multiplied by pi r square. And the whole energy would be appearing from here, but at a lesser cross-sectional area. So in that case, that will be equals to pi multiplied by r square. Now, it's very clear there, the r square by small r square, there will be a 100 factor. And the incident intensity was 1.30 kilowatt per meter square, so that's no price for guessing. The transmitted intensity or the intensity at that particular point would be 130 kilowatt per meter square. And we had to calculate the intensity in kilowatt per meter square. Therefore, 130 would be the correct option for this question number 13, right? Now let's move to question number 14. All right, the final question of this section it's bring, brought from the topic heat transfer and conduction is related to it. Two conducting cylinders of equal length but different radii are connected in series between two heat baths kept at 300 and 100 Kelvin. So let's see, where is the figure there? 300 and 100 Kelvin is the temperature there. So this is 300 Kelvin and this is 100 Kelvin, the two heat baths. Further, let's see, the radius of the bigger cylinder is twice that of the smaller one. So that means if this radius is r, this radius is 2r. And the outer jacket is simply an insulating material, so that's need not worry about that. And the thermal conductivities of the material of the smaller and the larger are k1 and k2. So this is given, k1 and k2. 
if the temperature at the junction of the two cylinder is 200 Kelvin, we need to calculate K1 upon K2. So this is the situation. 300 Kelvin given here, 200 Kelvin is the junction, 100 Kelvin. If you can easily equate and model down into this particular model where the temperature is 300, this is 200 and this is 100. Then let's calculate the length, you see. The length is there. If you talk about the resistance, now the thermal resistance is L upon Ke. And you could say that for the first case, that will be L upon K1 pi r square is the first thermal resistance. The second thermal resistance is L upon K2 into 4 pi r square. Now, I don't think so. Much further elaboration is required because the resistances are known. And since they are in series, the thermal current would be same. So that will give me 300 minus 200 divided by R1 is equal to 200 minus 100 divided by R2. And when you solve this, all you need to do is that a simple solution, K1 by K2, would come out to be 4, the required one. So as per the given format, the correct option would be 4.00. All right, so with this, we have done up with the integer part. Now it's a time to go to the next segment, and that comprises of comprehension. Let's see.